Hey guys, welcome back. So today I want to do something a little bit out of the norm. Typically we talk about firearms and their qualities and field strip them and talk about their accuracy and things like that. But in today's video, I want to ask you to help us, the entire firearms community, to resurrect a firearm I think we all agree needs to continue in development and be brought back to market. And that would be the Bushmaster ACR. And in this video, I'm going to ask you guys to do a few things that might be able to help prod the new owner of Bushmaster along to get this thing going. So before we get started with today's video, guys, please consider becoming part of our Patreon family. That's how we primarily fund here at the Military Arms Channel. It's how we make our videos. There is a link in the video description below to our Patreon page. You'll get early access to videos like this one. You'll get direct access to me. I answer all private communications. And there's some other perks as well. So again, please check out Patreon in the link below. With that being said, let's get started with today's video talking a little bit about the ACR, what's so great about it, and how you can possibly help us get this gun back on the market. Very rarely in modern firearm history do we really get a totally new design. Now, this gun does share some design inspirations from other firearms, but I've often said by the time 1939, 1940 rolled around, pretty much every type of operating system had already been invented, and every gun since that has used some components of previous designs dating back to the, you know, just before the turn of the century and just after the turn of the century. So there's nothing really truly new in, in terms of some components, but this gun is quite a bit different than other guns that were on the market. In other words, it's not just another AR-15. It is completely different. But it's how you take existing technology, reshape it, and turn it into something that makes it unique. Glock being a perfect example. Polymer framed handguns, HK did that in the 70s. Uh, you know, short recoiling Browning type action. Cool, that was done in the, you know 1910 and then in 1935 with the uh, Browning High Power. So uh, it, it really is how you package that uh, existing technology and what bits and pieces you grab from different things to put your gun together. So Magpul came up with this thing, called it the Masada. Everybody was dying to get their hands on one, me included. And then it went on for a while and they kept teasing us with photos and stuff like that. Ultimately, Magpul would sell the gun to Bushmaster and Wyndham, Maine. Bushmaster would just take what Magpul had done, put it straight into production, had some kinks in it that they didn't work out, and they put it right out on the U.S. market. Magpul was looking at a much lower price to market. And I think these things, when they first went out, were really outlandishly expensive. Um, you know, it was, I think they're like around $1,700, which was really off-putting to the gun community. They're like, oh man, I want one, but I can't really justify $1,700. But as people got over the high price of the gun and they started to trickle out into use, a lot of people, this gun has a cult following. A lot of people fell in love with the gun, myself included. You go way back in the Military Arms Channel history, you're going to find me comparing this to the SCAR-16, and I picked this rifle as my favorite, and I still hold by that to this day. I far more enjoy shooting this rifle than I do the SCAR-16. So, what happened then was Bushmaster was sold to the Remington Group, and Remington ran everything into the dirt. The quality of the guns went south. Uh, Remington Defense did a lot of great work in modernizing the gun, trying to get U.S. military interest in it or foreign military contract interest in it, but they kept the two divisions separate. This thing continued on with minor changes being made by Remington Arms, then the Remington Defense Group, an entire different business unit, really modified the gun, and the, the guns I got to see at SHOT Show were truly innovative. I thought that this thing was on the path to becoming something super. Then Remington tanked. It went out of business. It crashed. And then the assets were sold. And we'll talk about the company that, that bought the assets to this gun. And then once again, we'll talk about how possibly we as a community can help this company get this gun back onto the market if they're capable of doing it, which I hope they are. But what made the ACR different? Well, it's, it's again, it's a combination of things. It's just a very well-designed gun for its era when it was designed. It has full ampy controls. We have, you know, a selector lever back here on both right and left-hand side of the gun. We have a mag release that's present on both right and left hand side of the gun. We have a bolt stop bolt release just in front of the trigger on both sides of the gun. You push up on it to lock the bolt to the rear, push down on it to close the bolt. We have QD mounts already built into the gun. We have a, a stock that was just amazing. This stock is still being produced by Magpul and is used by all sorts of people on all sorts of different guns. Uh, people make adapters for them because they're such a good stock that people do SPR projects and stuff like that and use these. 
but you have the adjustable length of pull, you have the adjustable height of comb, and then it also is a folding stock with a little storage compartment in it. It's just a really, really well thought out stock. You'll see Magpul's markings, even though this is a Wyndham made gun, you'll see Magpul's markings on the polymer lower. So you have this aluminum upper, polymer lower, polymer stock, polymer forend. They did make another forend, which I'll show you later, uh, that was made out of aluminum and had 1913 rails on it. So the gun is just very ergonomic, have this reversible ambi charging handle. You can put it over on the other side, but everything about the gun was just, it, it was just right. The only complaint I really had about the gun was it was front heavy. In an early vid earlier video series, I talked about uh, I took this completely apart, a SCAR 16 completely apart, weighed just the actions minus the barrels, and both guns were nearly identical in weight. This has an M4 cut profile on it, which it doesn't need. If they would just make this a single pencil length, a, pen a pencil thickness barrel, that gets rid of this awkward muzzle weight, and the gun balances really, really nice. So, Remington goes out of business. ACR goes away. There's a whole cottage industry out there of people making parts and accessories for it. Again, it has a cult-like following. People want this gun back, myself included. This one's chambered in 5.56. It is a multi-caliber gun. Field stripping this gun is very simple. We'll show you that in the next segment. And then I'm gonna show you another version of the gun, which you could see that Bushmaster under Remington's control was trying to start to do different things. It took them forever just to make it multi-caliber. They were promising that every year at SHOT Show for five years, it seems, and they just never did it. But right at the very end, before everything collapsed, they really did make some multi-caliber conversions. And we'll show you that as well. If you guys haven't checked out Primary Arms online, please swing by and check out their website. They have all sorts of inventory uh, that ranges from firearms to accessories, really good prices, fast shipping, outstanding customer support. If you use the code MACMAC and you purchase a PA branded optic or red dot sight with a magnified optic, you'll get a free scope mount with that MAC code. Or if you pick up a red dot sight or a prism sight, you'll get a free kill flash anti-reflective de device. So please check out primaryarms.com. Really quick, let's take a look at the inside of the gun and show you how the thing works. To clear it, first of all, take the magazine out, check the chamber, make sure the weapon's empty. You have two push pins back here, but this top push pin is all that's required to take out, and it is a captive pin. All pins are captive. And once you do that, it hinges open just like an AR-15. So right now, if you're an AR-15 user, this is already gonna be familiar to you. If you wanna take the buttstock off, there's a second pin you can pop out, captive as well, and then you can just lift your buttstock off, all right? But there's no real reason to take your buttstock off unless you want to change it, but you can change the stocks on these very easily. And again, and I'll show you in another gun why that's actually a benefit to the design. Now, it has a non-reciprocating charging handle, so if you want to take the bolt and carrier out, you want to make sure that that charging handle is locked forward, then grab the recoil spring, take it out, and you can see the bolt and carrier assembly. It says multi-caliber on it. You can see on the face of it here where the gas piston, the short stroke gas piston the interfaces, taps on the face of the bolt carrier here. We have an M16 style bolt head that is spring loaded. Firing pin back here that's spring loaded and then just a cross pin that takes it all apart. I'm not going to get into all that. Inside, AR-15-ish looking hammer, but it does have its own trigger group, but you can see there's heritage there to the AR-15. Now, another interesting feature of the gun, which does have its benefits in the civilian world, especially in a multi-caliber gun like this, and that is the ability to take the barrel off, and quite easily. I think the design needs some more work. We've seen problems with these in the past, but this if you lock the bolt to the rear, you have this little lever here, you pull this down, it pushes on this heavily spring-loaded plunger, you push down on that, and then rotate, and the locking collar will lift up and away, and then the barrel just comes right out of the gun. So if you're doing a multi-caliber conversion kit, like what I'm about to show you, this is actually pretty darn handy. What I don't like, though, is the ratcheting system because it can become easily worn if you do it quite a bit, and we've seen it in, in poorly manufactured Remington guns. We did video uh, a video on quite some time ago. Um, this ratcheting system starts, the teeth start to wear on it, and when you shoot the gun, it'll start to unscrew, and the gun will start to malfunction, and accuracy will go completely out the window. But you can, uh, you have to push down that spring, bring this little guy over, ratchet it till it's tight, fold that away, and then you can put your handguard, which does have a heat shield on it, back on the gun. So, 
it had some really, really cool forward thinking, uh, you know, abilities with the design. And that's why it has a cult following. You can find people out there offering other calibers for it because Remington, up until the very end, when they finally did make other calibers, weren't offering caliber conversion kits, but the third party market stepped up to fill that hole. I get asked all the time, Mac, how can I get involved in the firearms industry? Well, there's no easy answer, but one way you can easily get involved in the firearms industry is to become a certified gunsmith. Modern Gun School has been teaching gunsmiths since 1945. It is accredited college, and also if you're a veteran and have a GI Bill, you can use that to enroll at Modern Gun School. So please swing by and check them out. I have a link in the video description below. So this is my old black ACR, and both of my ACRs are Wyndham-made guns before Remington got their hands onto them and really kind of destroyed them, got a whole video on that. But this gun, because of the modularity that I demonstrated, because you can quickly change out the handguards, like this one has the metallic 1913 rail handguards on it versus the lighter weight polymer handguards on it, just by pushing a pin, slide that on, modular handguards, boom. You have uh, some additional functionality that you wouldn't have with the other one. Uh, you know, I, I can use this to put my bipod on there if I want to when I'm shooting out in the field. Also, you'll notice that this one has a different stock on it. it. has a QD mounting point back here, has an adjustable riser for the cheek, and then also has an adjustable length of pull. This is one of those conversion parts that uh, Remington put out towards the end that I was able to get my hands on. And this gun is chambered in 6.8 SPC. So remember when I was talking about how easy it is to take the barrel off and how easy it is, you know, basically to swap out bolts and stuff like that? That modularity allowed me to literally in minutes turn this into a 6.8 SPC from a 5.56. That's one of the cool things, one of the big cool things about the ACR. Now, the 6.8 kits were, came at the very end of Remington's existence. I was lucky to get my hands on this one. They have an adjustable gas block, just like the 5.56, but they shipped with an AAC muzzle device on them, and that thing is like rock set on there. So that's why I'm running the AAC. This is an old school AAC uh, silencer on it. This is the SDN6, and it works really nice with the 6.8 SPC. So that, is where that modularity comes in handy. Truly multi-caliber, easily swapping out those barrels, including the stocks. The only thing you can't really do much with in this version of the gun is change out the pistol grip. But yeah, darn cool gun. Let's get it back on the market. So Remington, as you all know, folded up like a cheap tent and was dispersed to the wind. A whole bunch of different companies bought up various components of all their holdings, which were substantial. The key player in all this, though, was Franklin Armory. Franklin Armory acquired the assets of Bushmaster, at least the rights to the name. We don't know what they got. If they got tooling for AR-15s and ACRs, all I know is that the Bushmaster website is currently up and it is under the management of Franklin Armory and they're offering AR-15s. We need to help Franklin Armory get this gun back on the market. How can we do that? Well, first of all, I'm gonna post some information down below, just a public email address. You can send them a polite email saying, I'm really interested in the ACR. Is there any chance we can bring this back? Let them know there's an interest in this gun. AR-15 Bushmasters are nice, but we want this back. We want to see this thing continue in development. You can also, I mean, I'd, I'd go so far as to start a GoFundMe of some sort. I know they're anti-gun, but find some crowdfunding site that would allow us to help them build the financial resources they need to bring this thing back. I mean, anything that we can do, we should offer that assistance to Franklin Armory to bring this gun back because I do think it would be a tremendous market success based upon that cult following that the gun has. So that's my two cents on the whole thing. I really want to see this gun back on the market. I hope you do too. I implore you guys to take some action. We don't want to pester them, but we do want to let them know we want the gun back. Again, I'll put some information down below in the video description. All right, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please consider becoming a part of our Patreon family. There is a link in the video description below. Also, right here on YouTube, got that little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Mash that join button, and you can support us right here on YouTube in the age of demonetization. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 14 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.